mean, I have to stop playing Paper Mario and record Final Fantasy VII. Ah, fine. Hello, everybody. It's Sephiroth Total 4 for another episode of Final Fantasy VII. In the last episode, Bugenhagen went on a vacation without us. But, yeah. The good news is... <laughs> And Red 13, aka Frozen, got his ultimate weapon! And we're not gonna fight these guys! Ah, Paper Mario, I've been playing that a lot lately. I just love that game. I love it! Yeah, it's a great game. It's a really great game. One of the best. But anyway, we're playing Final Fantasy VII, not Paper Mario, unlike the beginning of the episode. So you may be asking yourself, Safi, where are you going with your voice like that? And I'll say to you, we're going to Nibelheim. There's a special little thingy that we can go check out over there, so why don't we just go over there and check it out? And you may be saying to yourself, ha, huh, I haven't been to Nibelheim in ages, and that would be true. This is also a good time to get the uh, Odin out of the safe if you haven't done that. Ah, memories of the beginning earlier part of the game. I love this place. This is one of the more nostalgic places for me. Anyway, we go down the spiral stair. Why? Because we want to fight those yin-yang enemies again. We just loved fighting those guys, didn't we? Ha ha! Ha ha ha! And I thought I would never be back here again. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Slash All. You are my savior. Oh, yes. I should probably heal Tiffa, shouldn't I? That would be a nice thing to do now, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 Let's go to the, let's go to the magic now, yeah? And, uh... Let's check out Frozen's ultimate weapon. I'll be, like I said a while back, I'll be doing a thing... Uh, not much better than the behemoth horn, but it's more slots, and like I said, each ultimate weapon has a specific formula for success. Uh, I hate this area. Aside from the fact that we got AJ here, this area is so annoying because of that one enemy. Did I just get- yeah, I went backward food. Damn you, changed- no, 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 please be the bats, please be the bats, please be the bats, please be the bats, thank you, bats. I just, I really don't like that yin-yang enemy, not because it's hard, but because it takes forever. It takes more time than Neo Bahama, and that's saying something. And one annoying person that's gonna be like, is gonna actually time how long Neo Bahamut takes is gonna be like, Safi, it doesn't really take that long, so shut up. But anyway, now that we're here. Memory! If you're wondering, this takes place after the Nibelheim reactor, uh, you know, when Shinra comes in to mop up Sephiroth's mess. Hey, this is your food. Are you telling that to a... Seriously? It's alive! <laughs> Sorry. Yes, yeah, so Zack is awake. And Cloud is just like... Because we know that Cloud was a little wimp and Zack was soldier first class. I will kill you. The purpose of this uh, cutscene is pretty much to to tell you what happened between the Shinra incident, the uh, the Nebelheim reactor incident, and how Cloud got to uh, uh, being Mr. Mercenary. Oh, here. Put on this. It smells a little though. Don't complain. You look pretty good with that. 
Well? We got a truck! Yo, old guy, we have Midgar yet? I just want to ask you guys something. Um, if you know anything about the, the geography of, uh, I think the plant's called Gaia, Gaia, G-A-E-A, -E or something like that, uh, Gaia, Nibelheim is on the westernmost continent, and Midgar is on the eastern continent. They are taking a truck with, through what looks like looks like Cosmo Canyon, which makes sense because Cosmo Canyon is just south of Nebelheim. How the heck are they supposed to get across the ocean on a truck? I ask you. Think about that. Shut up, you're lucky even I give you a ride! Zach, your hair is even more spiky than clouds. That's probably why you're so strong. What are you gonna do once we get to Midgar? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Cloud is still Mako sick. <sighs> I know what I'm going to do. That's not his voice. I know what I'm going to do. I got a place I could crash for a while. No, wait, the mother lives there too. Guess that's out. I'm pretty sure. That is Eris's house. Yep, gotta change my plans. Because Eris's boyfriend, original boyfriend, was Zack. So, uh, he's talking about that. Yeah. No matter what I do, I need some money first. Hey, want to start a business? But what can we do? Hey, Cloud. Think there's anything I'd be good at? Hey, old guy. What do you think I'd be good at? What are you yapping about? You're still young, ain't you? The young folks should try everything. Bear this is their birthday or their. Oh, no, who birthday tomorrow? Try everything. That's easy for him to say. He's driving a truck through a landscape that doesn't end. I bet you he's driving around in circles. Hey! Of course! I got a lot of brains and skill that other guys don't. That settles it. I'm gonna become a mercenary. Did he spell that right? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Pop. What? Yeah, you didn't even hear a word I said. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna become a mercenary and that's that. Boring stuff, dangerous stuff, anything for money. I'm gonna be rich. So, Cloud, what are you gonna do? No, oh, wait, you got it all wrong. Uh... Cloud, you are so talkative. Just kidding, I won't leave you hanging like that. We're friends, right? Special friends? Mercenaries, Cloud. That's what you and me are gonna be. Understand, Cloud? And that's why Cloud decided he'd be a mercenary. Zack is filling his head with memories. Blah, 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 blah. Cloud is just a failed experiment. <laughs> no more Shinra chasing them. Oh! What are you gonna do with him? Why? Why, Joe Martin? Why? Why would you kill Zack? <laughs> Why would you do something like that? <sighs> Forget it, just leave him. Why? I know you spared my life, and that's why I spared yours later, but you killed my friend! <sighs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, 
Okay, I'll stop. Oh, thank God I finally can get this sword. No! How did they get to Midgar? It's across the ocean! Or though the, the area they could have been going through might have been... No, Corel is on that side of the also. Anyway, that was Cloud's flashback. How he got to, uh... I love this perspective. That was how Cloud got to, uh... Got to Midgar with the idea of becoming a mercenary. Uh, how he got the, the uh, clothing and everything. And pretty much why he decided to be who he was. Because uh, to avenge Zack, to become Zack in his place. Uh, that's kind of why he was attracted to Eris. Because he kind of just became Cloud plus Zack. I, I have a feeling that wasn't actually Joe Martin that was in charge of that. Joe Martin and his two colleagues. You know, it, it couldn't be. I'm not gonna accept that. I'm not gonna accept that. It's just, it's just not possible. No! That's impossible! Yeah, my, my video already got taken down once for trying to put that clip in, and I'm not gonna try it again. I'm not gonna try the no clip either. I'm just gonna supply the voices myself. But yeah, so that was, that was, uh, I think that's pretty important just to show what happened to Zack because, because reasons, because stuff, it's just important. Um, if you haven't gotten Tifa's uh, ultimate limit break from there yet, do it now. In fact, now that we're, um, let's take a look at our team. Limit. So you're at limit level three. You're at also limit level three. Uh, I guess I'll keep Frozen in the party a little longer. Do you have any material on you? No, you don't. I guess I won't keep Frozen in the party. Uh, <laughs> um, who had all the material? Who? Who had all the material? We're not gonna be fighting anything like. Oh right, we had Yuffie. Actually, I wanted to put Yuffie in the party. Sorry, guys. Um. So, we're not going to be, like, fighting anything, really. Uh, we can, but but I won't. See that red thing over there? You see that red thing over there? That is death. That is death in a can. See that right there? Don't touch it. Don't touch it, children. Just leave it alone. What we are going to do now is we are going to, for the rest of the episode, I guess, head to Midgar and pick up something that I didn't have enough money for earlier. And look for that mountain range that they that they might have been going through because just look at this. There's nothing that they could have possibly been going through that that would constitute. Uh, it's just annoying. Wait, is Junon cut off from the rest of the world now? Ah, I mean we don't have the buggy anymore. We have the high wind, but. Uh, over here used to be a, uh, a crossable, uh, or it used to just be a regular landmass, now it's just a crater. It's actually pretty interesting. I like how they, uh, I like how they did that. They changed the geography of the, of the world like that. And Midgar should be... Midgar should be... there. Okay, so let's land over here. Probably get into an enemy battle, kill it in two seconds. But yeah, if you remember, Midgar, we can't parachute into it anymore, but we can still th head through the gate that we opened, so yay for that. Doo -doo. That's funny, did I drop the key? Yeah, that guy tells you it was in the Bone Village excavation tour. But we already got it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we already looked at that. Um, now we have to go back to the wall market. Wall market. Uh, nostalgia. I love this place. It's just so cool. Fighting the enemies here is pretty pointless because they don't really give you any experience or AP or gill and the characters I have in my party 
I stand corrected. <laughs> Apparently, Neo Bahamut only needed six AP to get to the next level. That 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 is an insult to the face. That's like unbelievable, unbelievable. We can go visit Eris's house if we really want to. I don't know why you would want to because I would start crying again, and I already cried once this episode. And I don't really want to do it again. Whee! But yeah, nostalgia. Like I said the last time we went through here to get Air's, uh, Tifa's ultimate weapon. That poor thing. <laughs> just, just... Marlene! Ah, good times. I mean, not really. That, that, what, that used to be Sector 7, so it's not really good times because they're all dead. But at least they were also buried. Hey, please stay here. We don't get any business because everyone that we don't there are no more tourists. Cause they kinda closed off the place. Please. Anyway. Let's go to the weapon shop. Machine gun. And if you talk to this guy, remember he was selling something for a bazillion dollars. I got something good for you. You probably just found it lying somewhere. 129,000 kill! No, okay. Sneak glove, and you're like, what? First of all, who has steel? You have steel? Yes, so the sneak glove is an accessory that increases the stealing rate! Yay! So if you want to increase your stealing rate, you can get the sneak glove. Come again. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that just awesome? Yeah, so it's a pretty good, uh, it's kind of annoying that you get it this late in the game, but, you know, it's, uh, it's nice. It's nice to have. Although, there's certain enemies uh, with, like, rare drops that if you have the stealing glove, it will never give you the rare drop. It'll only give you the regular drop. So just keep that in mind. And I guess I'll end up, well, no. Shinra have occupied the shop, but Shinra's dead! Shinra's dead! I know Don Corneo was your enemy, but Shinra's dead! No! Fine. Since I can't spend my night at the Honeybee Inn, um, I guess I'll end off the episode here by hiding. There we go. This has been Several Total War 4 with Final Fantasy 7 in the next episode. Uh, we'll just pick up some more random stuff. Um, I think I'll also show you uh, a neat little uh, unique enemy encounter in the game. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye.